Last time we had looked at atomic structure, we looked at evidence for the nucleus with Rutherford's alpha scanning experiment, uh, and we'd seen that inside the, uh, the atom we have three main particles, the proton, the neutron, and the electron. We saw their locations, uh, the relative masses, uh, and the relative charges of those. And we finished off by saying that a, um, a neutral atom has the same number of protons and electrons, because protons are positively charged, Neutrons are, uh, neutrons are neutrally charged, electrons are negatively charged. And so with the same number of protons and electrons, they cancel out. Today I want to look at uh, how we can describe the nucleus a bit better with things like atomic number and mass number, and how we can write that down with a notation. We'll talk a bit about isotopes, and then really want to get into one of the main parts of the topic, which is the idea of ionizing radiation. Three types of radiation that cause an atom to become ionized. So some of this you know already. Uh, the atomic number is how we describe any particular uh, atom or element really. Um, the periodic table is sorted by atomic number and the atomic number is the number of protons in a nucleus. And really it's going to define the chemistry uh, of any particular um, atom. So Hydrogen has one proton, helium has two, lithium has three, uh, and so on. Every single element has a different number of protons. And we call that the atomic number. We give that the symbol Z, which is a bit counterintuitive. You think A, but no, Z is what you use for that. Uh, the mass number is the second number that you'd see in a periodic table. It's usually a larger number. And that is the number of protons plus neutrons in a nucleus. So it always has to be at least the size of the atomic number, and usually bigger because there are extra neutrons as well. Together, protons and neutrons are called nucleons. So sometimes you might see that written down as a nucleon number. And again, counterintuitively, it has a symbol that doesn't seem to match up with its name. Uh, we call it, we give it A. And um, this word isotopes appears. An isotope, uh, or different isotopes of an atom, are different versions of the atom that have the same number of protons, and therefore they're the same chemical element, but have different numbers of neutrons. And we'll come back to that in a second. Whenever we write down a um, symbol to represent a nucleus, um, we use this formation, where A is the mass number, Z is the atomic number, and X is the chemical symbol. Um, we always put the mass number, the larger number, on the top, and the smaller number, the atomic number, on the bottom. So um, we'll see some examples of that when we look at isotopes. So isotopes, as we said, are the same number of protons, different numbers of neutrons. That means that um, they have the same atomic number, the same mass number. And because they've got the same atomic number, the same number of protons, they also have the same number of electrons, which means that their chemical properties are identical. So, for example, you could have different versions of carbon and, you know, they can they can swap with each other in a chemical reaction without causing any difficulty. So some of the carbon in your body is what we call carbon-12. A certain percentage will be carbon-14. Chemically, they do exactly the same thing. They will have differences when it comes to the radioactive properties, which we'll come to uh, at a later stage. So... Uh, an example, helium-4 is our normal helium. It has uh, two protons and two neutrons, so it's got an atomic number of two on the bottom, a mass number of four on the top. Notice I called it helium-4. If you ever hear a number uh, after an element's name, that's referring to the specific isotope. So helium-4 has a mass number of four. But we can also have the rarer version, helium-3, which has two protons, one neutron, for an overall mass number of three. Some isotopes are not stable. A lot of isotopes are stable, but a fair number are not stable and will tend to disintegrate or decay. In other words, they've got too much energy and the combination of protons and neutrons in the nucleus are uh, not quite balanced. And to make itself more stable, the nucleus will tend to sort of split apart and give off extra bits. 
And these extra bits that come off are known as ionizing radiation. And we'll see why they're called ionizing a little bit later. Any nucleus that does tend to want to decay, we'll call that a radioactive nucleus. Um, activity refers to how much radiation or is coming out or how many decays there are. Now, we mentioned this in class when we did the DICE experiment. Radioactive decay is both random and spontaneous. Those are important uh, key words to know. Random implies that you cannot tell when any particular nucleus is going to decay, nor can you make it decay. You can't heat it up or add an electric charge or add some sort of chemical to make it decay. It'll happen by itself in its own time, and you cannot predict when it's going to happen. You could have two nuclei identical beside one another, and one might decay in the next 10 seconds, and one might not decay for another 10 years. There's no way of knowing. Spontaneous means it'll happen by itself. You cannot make it happen. So random will happen unpredictably. Spontaneous, you cannot make it happen. So generally what happens is you've got an unstable nucleus. It's got too many protons or, or too many neutrons. And um, what tends to happen is it'll try to get rid of some of its excess energy, usually by splitting off a particle. In this case, we've got two protons and two neutrons coming off, leaving a slightly smaller, more stable nucleus behind, and this ejected bit of particle, uh, which is radiation. The word radi radiation just means to radiate out some sort of energy or um, even particles that are going to uh, come out from something. Um, in this case, we're interested in types of radiation known as ionizing radiation. That type of particle with two protons and two neutrons is known as an alpha particle. Uh, and we'll have a look at, um, at what that means at a later stage. It's important to remember that we don't talk about an atom being radioactive. It's the nucleus that decays. This whole thing is called nuclear decay. Um, we're always talking about the nucleus. If an atom is radio, or sorry, if a nucleus is radioactive, it means it is going to decay and give out radiation. We can measure radioactivity uh, using something called a Geiger-Muller tube, and I'll show you one of those in a bit. Um, and it will decay. Uh, detect how many decays or how many bits of ionizing radiation come into it. Um, and if we count the number of decays per second, that is what is known as the radioactivity of a source. The unit is the becquerel. So if something had a radioactivity of three becquerel, it would mean three decays per second. A thousand becquerel, a thousand decays per second. We have three main types of alpha, of We have three main types of ionizing radiation that we're concerned with in this topic. The first one is known as alpha radiation. Alpha radiation, as I've mentioned already, consists of two protons and two neutrons. That means we can give it an atomic number of two and a mass number of four. So really it's the same as a helium nucleus, but it doesn't have any electrons. It's just a particle that is split off from a, an unstable nucleus um, and, uh, and leaves it, taking some energy behind it. This is the way we write it. We've got 4, 2, and alpha. Alpha is just the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Uh, the 4 refers to the mass number. The 2 refers to the atomic number. That formation of 4, 2, and alpha is important that you memorize that. You will not have to memorize the notation for any other um, um, isotopes or elements or atoms but you do need to memorize them for the three types of ionizing radiation. You could also write it down as 4, 2, 8G because they're identical. Our second type is beta or beta radiation, um, and it consists of a fast moving electron. Now, this is not an electron that is split off from the, um, the shells of an atom or orbiting a nucleus. This is one that has been ejected from the nucleus itself, which should sound surprising because you don't normally get electrons in a nucleus. 
we give it an atomic number of negative one. Um, it's not that it has negative one protons, but it's got the charge of negative one. Um, and so for the sake of uh, nuclear decay equations that we'll come to in a future lesson, we're going to call that negative one. I'll refer back to that in a minute. Is a mass number of zero. It doesn't mean it has a mass of zero. Because it's an electron, it's a mass of one over 1840 um, in terms of the proton. But we're going to give it a mass number of zero because there are no protons and no neutrons. And so we can write it down as zero negative one beta or zero negative one E. Uh, that negative one, as I said, doesn't mean that it's got a negative proton. It is there because it is produced by a, um, by a neutron turning into a proton. So under certain circumstances, which we call beta minus decay, a neutron will change into a proton plus an electron. And that electron is ejected. So that's this extra electron that's been generated inside a nucleus and has come out. Um, before that reaction, there were no protons. Afterwards, there is a proton. And so really to balance both sides of the equation, we give the electron an atomic number of, of minus one to balance those out. And we'll see what that means, as I said, at a later stage. There is another rarer form of beta decay called beta plus decay, which you do not need to know about in this course. And what happens is a proton will decay into a neutron and give out a positive electron, known as a positron. This is antimatter. We deal with this at A level, but it's not uh, something that you normally see. Um, but I'm putting it there because it shows that a neutron is not normally made up of a proton plus an electron. It just so happens that uh, whenever it's unstable, whenever a nucleus is unstable, one way of it getting rid of extra energy is these, these particles changing from one type into another. Our third form of ionizing radiation is called gamma. And it's very different because it is not a particle. Uh, alpha was two protons and two neutrons. Beta was an electron. Gamma is an electromagnetic wave. It's just a burst of energy in a waveform. We'll deal with electromagnetic waves um, in the uh, first topic of Unit 2 um, waves, but it's similar to light or x-rays or radio waves. It's just a burst of energy that comes out. As such, it has no atomic number and no mass number because it is not a particle. So it actually has zero mass. The beta particle had a mass number of zero, but it did have a mass. This has no actual mass. And we write it down like this, zero, zero, with this odd sort of gamma um, form. Whenever we're in school, we normally do experiments with this using radioactive sources that uh, come in little pots like this. This is called a sealed cup source. Um, and you see it's a little source of, in this case, americium-241 which is an alpha emitter, stored in a little pot with a little bit of foil behind it. Um, I don't have any of these here at home, so you can't see experiments with these, but that's the sort of thing that we'll be using. This is a Geiger-Muller tube that we use to detect ionizing radiation um, that we have in school. I'll show you a different type of one. What happens is the ionizing radiation uh, moves into it. Uh, a little current is produced and that's attached to a, a counter and it counts up the number of, of ionizations that take place. And we can use that to measure the activity of a source by measuring how many counts there are in a certain amount of time and um, dividing that down to find how many counts there are per second. But sometimes we use per minute or per hour. We call it ionizing radiation because the particle that comes in, the alpha or beta or gamma, will cause an atom, if it hits the atom, to lose an electron. So here we're going to look at, uh, at an atom that has uh, four protons, uh, in this case four neutrons as well, and it's neutral, so it has four electrons. You can see they're all orbiting. 
but a particle is going to come in and it collides with the outer electron and knocks it off. And we're now left behind with four protons and three electrons. So in this case, we're left with a charged atom. It's got one more positive charge than negative, and that's called an ion. So the outer electron is hit by the alpha or beta or gamma radiation. That electron is knocked out of its orbit and the atom's left positively charged. And that's what we call an ion. That process is called ionization. In chemistry, you talk about ions and they can be things that have gained or lost electrons. In this topic, we're only concerned with atoms that have lost electrons. It could be an alpha particle, which comes in and is positively charged and will strip the electron out of the atom. It'll try to capture an electron. Or a beta particle, which is an electron, but it'll just collide and knock an electron out of the way. Or gamma radiation is, the, the electrons will sort of absorb the gamma radiation and just be uh, given so much energy that they break away from the atom. That's why it's known as ionizing radiation. Alpha is the most ionizing because it's got the biggest charge. It's also, because it's the heaviest particle, it moves more slowly and therefore as it moves past an atom, it has more time to, to collide. So alpha is the most ionizing. Beta is the next most ionizing. It's got less charge and less mass and it moves much, much faster. So it has less time to do it. And gamma is actually the least ionizing because it has no mass, it has no charge, um, so it, it is less likely to knock an electron out of the atom. It can do it though, however, if the atom will absorb the, uh, the gamma particle's energy, the gamma wave's energy, and the electron will be ejected. This is the sort of GM counter that we have in school. Uh, you can see it's connected to a data logger. Um, there's a little window which the ionizing radiation goes into and in time it detects something the data logger will record a number. You can hear it beeping away there. It's not a very steady beep um, but that's detecting what we call background radiation which is just naturally occurring radiation that's surrounding us and we'll deal with that uh, at a later stage. You can hear a bit of the randomness of this and sometimes there's a long, long wait between beeps, and other times you get a few right beside one another. But the background radiation rate in certainly this part of Northern Ireland is actually fairly low. And you can see that, you know, over the space of a minute or so, we've um, only had 15 or so uh, detections. We'll talk more about background radiation at a later stage.